few minutes, I would like to talk about how bots and AI can make a big difference within the contact center field of use. In order to better understand the opportunity, I would like to start with your permission with an alert, with a tsunami alert, with a digital tsunami alert. What we can see behind me, as we speak, there are close to 300 billion interaction between us, the consumers, to the brand. Believe it or not, 90% of them, or only 10% of them, are digital. It's, it's strange. What we're expecting during the upcoming few years, it's a major shift from voice to digital, and this is the tsunami, this is the opportunity. There are many reasons for that. I would say, to summarize the reason, is because we, the consumer, we chose a digital lifestyle, and we prefer and we managed, we, uh, we took messaging as the natural choice to communicate. And we're expecting this communication exactly as we speak with friends and family. We expect the same method while we are discussing or interacting with the brand. Let's take a close look about how it looks like within the contact center in the enterprise. On one hand, we have tens to hundreds of millions of consumers. Those consumers interacting via multiple touch points with tens of thousands of agents around the globe. If I'm applying the digital move on this use case, what we see is um, several channels or touch point will practically decrease and even disappear such as voice and email, stores, even websites. While on the other hand, from the contact center point of view, we will see bots side by side to the human, empowering the human, empowering the contact center, and driving best-in-class customer service. And this is practically the opportunity. Another point of view, if we're looking about how it looks like from the contact center point of view, it's a big cost reduction. We see voice decreasing, messaging increasing, and messaging serving as a springboard for bots and AI. Another point, if we're looking at you know, the contact center and specifically big enterprise organization, we're expecting to see bots embedded within the organization. What does it mean? It's a state of mind change. It's a shift. It's a different way of thinking, different way of measuring, different way of processes, practices. And by the end of the day, it's a big opportunity. And if I'm thinking about opportunity, I saw so many amazing ideas outside, excellent technology. But what does it take for this technology to really make a difference within the big enterprise and contact center? I'm sure that the guy behind me is really good. But if you think about what does it take for him to be a superstar? For him to be a superstar, he probably needs a stage, a band, dancers, video, audience, venue. What does it take for you guys to take your technology and get the stage? get the opportunity to shine in front of the enterprise, in front of the contact center. So that's exactly what we thought about while creating a framework for both those players. And I would like to spend a minute about the framework. In order to be successful, first and foremost, you need to have meaningful data. Meaningful data that you can learn from it you can learn areas that expected to be automated. You can learn about things that you automated already and require some improvements. Based on this data, there is a need to deploy, gradually deploy, A-B test. And furthermore, to take this deployment to multiple channels, channels like in-app, website, messengers, etc. There is a need to expand and grow. That's part of what this framework is giving to you guys. And you know, if we're looking about the day-to-day -day in a contact center, it's pretty busy. It's complicated. There are a lot of regulation, 
and real-time KPIs and decisions in real-time about availability and, you know, new offering coming into place and transfers or handover between agents and obviously tons of KPIs to measure the, uh, the shift in real-time. That's part of, you know, what expected from an agent or from a bot within this system. The entire interaction between, you know, we spoke about, you know, in the previous uh, uh, sessions, in many cases I heard about the interaction between human and bot. That's an art, it's a combination of art and technology, how to do, how to transfer, which one need to join, when to join a conversation, and how to drive best-in-class best experience to us, to our customers. And this circle practically continue with continuous improving, Le learning from the reporting, understand what else needs to be automated, and obviously improve the existing uh, things. So this framework is indeed make a big difference and enable the bot to be successful, but it's not enough. If you're thinking about enterprise, things like regulation, security, scalability, reliability, that's added on top of this framework because this is like, those are things that are a showstopper. If you don't have them, you cannot play within the enterprise and the contact center. Speaking about uh, deployment at scale, I couldn't think about a better example of actually having IBM Watson in the center of this deployment. So I'm here to share with you a little bit more what we did and doing with IBM deploying with key customers, telcos, and bank. Um, and I'm inviting Adam Orchlander, Orange Schlander. Yeah, I find someone with a more complicated family name <laughs> for mine. So uh, uh, Adam will uh, share with, me, with you guys more a little bit how IBM Watson leveraged the framework that I've just described. Thanks, Haran. So, important thing to mention is we have Live Person, the leader in enterprise messaging solutions with IBM, or partnering with IBM, the leader in cognitive systems. I think the first thing to mention is cognitive, right? Cognitive. It's all about augmenting human intelligence, the way IBM thinks about it. It's about assisting humans, applying artificial intelligence to assist humans at scale. Watson is now being focused from a, from a use case scenario at transforming the contact center. And that's exactly where we're working with live person to transform cognitive care. So, important thing to start here, okay? The cognitive systems, the definition of cognitive systems, um, the way IBM looks at it from differing cognitive systems, differing from traditional program systems, understanding, reasoning, and learning. The first thing is understanding, right? Us as humans, when we have <clears throat> conversations with one another, a lot of times we speak with one another in ambiguities. So for example, um, I dropped the ball this morning. Like perhaps you're talking to your spouse in the morning and you say, I dropped the ball. Dropping the ball on something could mean I dropped a bouncy ball on the floor. If you have young kids, I dropped you know, one of those little rubber bouncy balls. Could mean I dropped something in personal life. Could mean I dropped something at work. Understanding cognitive systems, cognitive systems being able to reason, to better understand exactly what the user is asking for or asking about in context, disambiguate, so it could better understand, and then learning. Us as humans, we always learn. Every conversation we have with another individual at work, just our normal day jobs, we're consuming, we're processing information. The way IBM looks at it is from a, from, a, from a continual learning perspective, cognitive systems have to incorporate feedback, and they do incorporate feedback based on user interactions, and never stop learning because then they improve their understanding and reasoning abilities when they interact with humans. So now Watson for cognitive care. Um, so, so I already mentioned, I already mentioned that, you know, Watson has been, you know, Watson's been out there. You've all heard about it in the, you've all heard about it in the market, in the industry. There are now a billion people that have touched Watson in some way, shape, and form. You may not know it, but yes, there are a billion people that have touched Watson in some way, shape, and form. 
Um, it's, now, it, it's now becoming a, a, a medical assistant. It's assisting with cancer diagnostics and treatment plans. Um, by the end of this year, it will be able to understand about, about treat, be able to project treatment options for about 80% of the cancers that exist today. Okay, at least that we understand that exists today. Um, we've trained it with you know, many universities, uh, 20 universities in particular on genomics and oncology. And now what we're doing is we're applying Watson to cognitive care. Um, all about augmenting human intelligence, making customer service managers, representatives more effective at what they do. Um, the way we're doing this is we have, <clears throat> we're enabling essentially developers as well as contact center managers to manage bots just as they would humans. You know, Iran was mentioning in his presentation that this human bot tango, okay? We're training Watson on many industries, many languages, many different use cases. Um, making sure that it, it understands based on user interactions and is able to reason and then learn based on those interactions. We're embedding it in the customer care workflow with LivePerson as a platform. Okay, so LivePerson and Watson together delivering on customer care as a platform. And in the end, what it's going to allow is it's going to allow, essentially, as I said, virtual agents to function like human agents. I think a very important thing, you know, Iran was mentioning at scale, functioning at scale. So one of the key tenets of IBM Watson is customers' data is their data, okay? Whether it be licensed third-party data, whether it be private data that could be residing in a back-end system, customer data is their data, both structured and unstructured. And Watson and, its, and essentially its algorithms and its technology have been optimized to enable that and to allow you to continue to use your data as your data. So now I just want to turn it right back over to Iran. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the successes that we've had in the market together uh, over the past couple of months. Thank you. So um, I would like to share some key insights from what we learned. I will start with the first one. And the first is a deep understanding that bot is yet another agent. <clears throat> if you think about it, a bot has an ID, picture, name, is being measured exactly like any other human, is being scored by us as consumer if he's providing a good service. He expected to introduce continuous improvement and guess how, if it's not good enough, it probably will find its way out, exactly like human. So a deep understanding that bot is yet another agent is very important, and it's a big advantage to the contact center that can manage tens of thousands of agents in a seamless way. If we're talking about bot as an agent, we're expecting a bot to have um, a, um, a specified roles and responsibilities. And I can define between three types of bots. The first one is um, a basic FAQ or knowledge base. There's a lot of data in the website. We can make it accessible via conversation. So the first bot is well-known questions and answer based on knowledge base and FAQ. The second bot is a real-time query. It's the ability to give account-specific information, like what is my balance? That's obviously require a backend integration with the CRM or with any other system that require to retrieve this data. While the third type of bot is more complicated, is everything that we see today as forms, as wizards, business processes that can easily be automated and save time to the contact center. If you think about those three types of bots together, they represent a nice portion of interaction that can boost customer service and reduce costs. I spoke about the tango between human and agent, and um, a human and bot. And I want to deep dive a bit on that. So first of all, it's not a transfer between a bot to the agent. It's actually a collaboration, an empowerment. They empower one each other. They join the conversation in a specific period when needed, while we, the consumer, benefit from this tango and they joining and disappearing within the conversation. The handover between bot and, and, uh, and a human can happen in several cases. 
Case number one would be that we as a consumer raising our hand and saying, I want to talk to an agent. The system will understand that and will ask the right human to join the conversation. He will join with seeing the entire context right to the point. The second option is that the bot with a clear role and responsibility cannot handle this specific question. In this case, he will politely say that he will add the right human to the conversation. The system can identify the real-time sentiment and understand that the conversation is going to the wrong way or wrong direction, and then ask the relevant human to join the conversation. More than that, I saw how bots are embedded within the system. We'll have people managing bots, and those people, human, will monitor the bots in real time, and they can take a decision to join a conversation or to hijack a conversation whenever they feel that it's needed. So this tango, by the end of the day, add huge value to us as a customer experience, and definitely from operation perspective to the contact center, it's add a lot of value to the operation. Last but not least, if we are talking about big numbers and we're talking about deployment at scale, there is a need for a framework, for a platform to manage that. We have millions of consumers using multiple channels talking to tens, thousands or tens of thousands of agents, bots and human, and there is a need to manage that in real time and take decision and manage the shift and live engage provide a real time platform that enable to manage big contact center at scale with all the benefits that I've just mentioned earlier. So what's next? In order to benefit from the framework that I've just described, during the last six to eight months, we invest a lot to open the platform. Everything that you heard from Adam, from IBM Watson, leverage the framework that we built, the APIs that we opened, and I invite you all to go to developers.lifepresident.com and get started. I would like to wish you all great success and good luck. Thank you.